Yo, what's up, PPL fans? Shout here, coach of the Bayern Munich. And welcome to PPL Season 4, Week 3. Uh, and apologies for this being super fucking late. I'm really sorry, but uh, we played this on, on Tuesday? Monday? I think on Monday. Um, I don't actually remember. Uh, and I only got. I went on a trip on Tuesday. So I couldn't really do anything. I couldn't record. Um, because I didn't have my headset with me. Uh, internet was shit. In the place we were staying at, but you know, work trips didn't really get to choose if I want to go or not. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was a fun trip. In case anyone's wondering, it was it was fun uh, with cool people and stuff. Uh, anyway, week three, Alex Wanzi Bainat, a very good friend of mine. Ever since season one, he's been in the league. He's a great dude. Make sure to check him out in the description down below. Also, make sure to team analysis. Uh, that was not a sentence. Also, make sure to check out team analysis. I just well, like three words there, um, which is also in the description below, so you know what I'm bringing, why I'm bring, why I'm bringing it, uh, and how I'm gonna beat Alex hopefully. So, um, let's get at, into the actual match. So, um, I'm bringing Nido Queen, uh, which is a special defensive take on his Gengar, Spidef Ladias to deal with his um, Volcanion and his Fundy T, mainly Volcanion, uh, Choice Bandit Sneasel. Mega Pidgeot, which is a fairly standard set. I don't remember what it is. Let me let me check what it is. Okay, Hurricane Heatwave, U-turn Roost. So yeah, literally just a standard set. Uh, SD Air Balloon Lucario, and uh, mixed defensive standard spread Clefable with Fire Last and T-Wave. So unaware by the way. So uh, Alex had to bring Thunny T, Mega Latios, Ferrothorn, Hariyama, Scyther, and Volcanion. Okay, first up, no Gengar. Nice. No Licky Tongue, no Gigalith. Means AB Thunity, 100%, otherwise he just straight up gets 6 over Mega Pidgeot. Um, well, you can afford to have Skull, but you get a point. Um, no Sand Slash, which means uh, Lucario doesn't set up on anything really. Uh, Pidgeot on Scyther, but that's pretty much... Actually, AB Thunity I could set up on there potentially, uh, and just live just about. Um, I can live a hit from Mega Latios even, depending on his spread and stuff, and, you know, the, the stuff and the things. Um... And that's pretty much it. If Volcano locks itself into Earth Pole for absolutely no reason, then I guess I can set up on that as well. <laughs> uh, and yeah. But there's no Gengar, which is so huge. Which means Nino Queen has free... I can just uh, be very free and just switch into things. Um, and just get rocks and deal with, help deal with Thunny T, stuff like that. Which is very, very nice. Uh, also no Gramble, which is kind of cool because I didn't really have a switch into that. Also have Nino Queen, um, which can just get tweaked up by an offensive Earthquake set. So, um, other things to note, he has three things, three important things, weak to self blocks. Scyther is a threat, I don't really have a good switch into an ba to abandon aerial ace, look at my team, I don't have a flying resist, uh, I don't have anything that's fully fit at fizz death, so Scyther is a huge problem. Um, flying T is always a problem because it's the best I've in draft format, and Volcanion can be a problem as soon as Latios goes down, uh, and if I don't play that well. Volcanion just kind of runs through my team. If you look, want to look at, want to take a look at it, there's nothing to take on the Volcanion. So, um, Gengar Rocks is number one priority because the only form of removal is the Megalodios, which if he has Defog is a lot less threatening, uh, and potentially Scyther if he wants to have a Defog four times weaker Rocksmon, he could do that. Like an emergency option on the the balance sets that I'm more likely expecting. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Also. As soon as Hariyama goes down and Ferrothorn takes some damage, Sneasel just runs through his team, like absolutely destroys him. So, that's important to note. Um, and let's just get into the game. Let's click the magic play button and we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I probably should have done it earlier, but hey, there was the sound that makes the world go round. I don't know. <laughs> so, Adam is issuing a challenge because it's Alex's real name, plot twist. Uh, and I lead with SF, you know, Queen, because as I said, rocks are number one priority. And he's gonna lead with Volcano. He predicts that very nicely. It's the only thing on this team that I wouldn't want to see him lead with for my Nido Queen, which is fine though, because I have my Spidef Latias. I can switch into that and not take any damage from the thing pretty much. And he's gonna go for the Steam Eruption. Now I get to scout damage. That does roughly zero. He does not get a burn. This tells me he's a timid Volcano. No boost net. Very good to know because he's most definitely a choice scout Volcano. So, turn two. I'm gonna make the prediction of him going into Ferrothorn. Uh, even if he stays in, it's fine. I can just roost up since he is most likely Scarf. Uh, even if he isn't, then I can just outspeed him and roost up on potential HPS. Like I, I don't have any. I don't lose anything going for HP Fire. 
Paris is going to take around half from his, uh, from his HP fire, which means he's not fully fizzed death. He has some split death investment. Uh, and that's very nice. He also has nothing to switch into Lydias, by the way, which is very, very nice. Um, so, got the damage off the thing, but I don't want to stay in. Uh, I'm just going to go safely into New Queen. And he goes for T-Wave, which is very nice. Um, I'm going to go for Rocks this turn. Rocks are up, and we are sitting pretty. Rocks are going to be so huge against Team He's going to have his own Rocks, which are a little annoying, but I can deal with them a little better than he can. So, uh, switch out to Lydias, by the way, because I don't want to take anything. Take a T-Wave knockoff, whatever. So, now I'm going to start Ice Beaming, because anything on the team I can take... An Earth Power cannot take an Ice Beam, at least not well. Of course, Lydios can take one, but it does want to take it. AB32 is going to take a huge chunk. Uh, so he's going to stay in and go for it. You see, that's fine. Um, I do more than he can recover, and that's very important because he doesn't have leftovers, which makes me think he's probably like Choppleberry, something like that. Lumberry, Ockerberry, potentially, but Ockerberry doesn't really make much sense against my team. So I'm just going to keep staying in, keep spamming Ice Beam on his, on his dude. Uh, and just wear him down because Ferrothorn is a little bit annoying to my team and I'm going to put him in range for my Ladias 100%. Uh, also Clefable, everything, he's going to die. So <laughs> I don't keep spamming Ice Beam as he goes into Park in his Harayam and I'm fine with this because these are his two answers to Sneasel. And I'm wearing them both down and that is so, so important. So going to go for the Ice Beam here. He has absolutely nothing which confirms that he is not offensive. He is a uh, bulkier, thick fat variant, most uh, thick fat guaranteed, probably bulky. Hard tail on Wi-Fi. So, uh, I'm going to stay in because I don't have a switch into Ariyama. And I want to weaken the thing. The thing is such a threat to my team. Really annoying to my um, Seasel. So, just going to go for the Earth Pog. Get some good damage off on the thing. As he's going for the Heavy Slam, predicting my Clefable, which is very, very nice for me. And you can get to see it on a day. And gets to, gets, uh, gets to get some more damage off. Uh, and I decided to just go for Earth Pog again. I uh, could have gone for Ice Beam, uh, predicting one of his uh, Ground Immunities to come in, but I really wasn't worth it. As you can see, he's gonna stay in with his Nariyama, and I'm gonna get some good damage off on the thing. That thing's really, really low now, and I'm gonna die to an Ice Punch, but Nino Queen has done work. Got up rocks, got up damage, on, got off damage on two of his big threats of his two best answers to Sneasel, or the only answers to Sneasel, so I'm gonna go into Ladias here, uh, because I can switch it, knock him over to Psychic, and he doesn't have a switch it. Uh, what also allows me to do is get some lefties back after the rocks damage. Uh, if I would have switched Lali's heart into like Volcano, uh, would not have been able to do that. So, Harima goes down, and that's pretty fucking sweet. And he has nothing that can deal with his Lali's. He has only one option, and that is his Mega Ladios. Which is what he's going to go into right here. Uh, and I'm just going to make the safe play of going into Clayble. He could go, he could do me right here if he has offensive Psychic, Zen Headbutt, or Psy Shock potentially after rocks. Um, I think I actually don't know what is in head, but I know the other two kill me after rocks. I have a good chance to, so. Um, but I don't think he's going to make the play that early. I don't think Alex is that super ballsy player, because uh, that would be way too risky of a play, in my opinion, as well. So, uh, he's going to make up, and he's going to go for the Dragon Claw. So, he is a Dragon Dance variant that I was fairly sure he was going to bring against me, because it just really, really does well against my team. So, uh, that does no damage, and I'm just going to click the magic button, which I think is a T-Wave, I don't even remember. Yeah, I'm just going to click T-Wave here because it's my safest play. If he goes Thunder T, that's fine. Uh, he's going to recover rocks damage, and that's about it. Uh, and he's going to go into his uh, Thunder Thorn, which is going to shut off from the Anticipation, which is a good, good bring in his part, by the way. Uh, I'm going to get a T-Wave off, and he's going to reveal that he is, in fact, a Lumberry Ferrothorn, which is good to know. Uh, not that it matters at this point, because next turn, he's going to die to a Fire Blast. Um, Lumberry was there for my Rotom Wash. Uh, I'm going to risk hitting a Fire Blast here and him going for a steel move, but I'm going to hit because Moonshine is our captain, and captains don't fucking miss, boys. Ferrothorn goes down, Clefable gets a kill, and we're up 5-4, I think. I think we are. <laughs> so, going to get more lefties back and get that 1 HP back to full HP, and he's going to Larson, his Sunny T, and I do not want to take a Sludge Wave because Clefable is super important at this point. I have a Ladias, which does not care about the thing in the slightest. Um... I can just switch in. If he goes for such wave, it's going to do absolutely nothing. Can take a dark pulse afterwards. Uh, and again, he's most definitely assault list. There's no way he isn't when I have a mega PDR. Yeah, that does nothing, which confirms he is in fact assault list. I can take another dark pulse. I can go take a dark pulse and just roost up on this turn. Uh, which he's going to go for? He's going to try to weaken my Ladius. Hope that he I don't have roost. He gets a crit flinch. to anyone <laughs> that's one turn and my counter two of his Pokemon is gone 
And he's gonna, of course, abuse it, which is his best play, and I'll, I'm not blaming him for it. But Jesus Christ, this game is terrible. <laughs> the only thing I have on this team that cannot, that can live a hit from Volcanion, two hits from Volcanion, in fact, is Clefable. So right now, our fucking captain has to carry on our fucking back. On its fa fucking back. It's the only bulky Pokemon I have left. I don't have to rely on it. So I'm gonna go click Moomas here because I switched in. He's gonna be like, fuck you, I'm getting out because I don't wanna take a T wave. He's gonna go to Funny T. No, he went to Megaladios, which still works because I get huge damage off. He actually lives, which is ridiculous. And he's gonna go for Steel Wing, which I nimbly dodge. So there's some revenge hacks, um, which I don't think makes up for it too much because I'm, I lost a Pokemon for it. He just didn't get damage off. Terrible times. I'm sad. Ladias was so important to this game, and I, I'm sad. <laughs> so he's going out in Scyther, and I make a bit of a misplay here. I'm going to click T Wave, uh, as he goes for a Defog, which makes me think. Okay, first up, you're Lord. Second up, you're Violite. Uh, but I'm going to get a T Wave off into the thing, slow him down. Uh, this was, by the way, a bad play on my part because if he was banned Aerial, he would have easily two killed me. I would not have been able to re recover, and I would have pretty much lost the game right there. So that was a bad, bad play on my part. Uh, not that I could have done much after the crit on Elias. Everything just kind of goes to shit right here, but <laughs> it's fine. So now I'm going to go into the Halsey, get my Mega Evolution off, and he's going for another Defog, which means he's a choice Defog Scyther. Alex, you absolute lord. So uh, he's going to switch out. He's going to preserve his Scyther. I'm going to Mega up, Mega up and just go for a Hurricane. Uh, I probably should have gone for Heat Wave and potentially taken the... I don't think would have been 3 killed on the No, definitely would have, wouldn't have been. But, um, you know, some more chip damage is always nice. But I'm just gonna go for the Hurricane, get some damage over the Sunny T, and 100% finally confirm that he is Assault Vest. Not that it wasn't obvious before. Uh, I don't know if I switch into this thing anymore because my Ladias went down. <laughs> gonna go for Heat Wave, uh, and. What the fuck? Okay, so he's gonna go for Wall Switch. Uh, excuse me for that. And I'm gonna live! Halsey, you fucking beast! So I'm gonna live the Wall Switch, and this is gonna tell me what. He's 100% gonna confirm his scarf right here. He took his time to be like, oh no, I'm not scarf. I have nothing for this. No, 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 no. That doesn't work on me. You you cannot bluff on me. It's not working. So he's gonna reality his scarf 100%. And Mega Peter's gonna go down, but this is good knowledge because that means Clefable beats it. Easy. He also switched out on earlier, which means, again, he's not specs. There's no way. Uh, not that it wasn't obvious from the turn 1 damage. <laughs> so, by the way, if he wasn't scarf, I would just one right there, which is kind of sweet. So, gonna go for another T wave here. I expect him to stay in. Uh, and I'm gonna knock out the incoming Scyther with a Fire Blast on the following turn. That's another kill for our captain. And Scyther goes down, that's good. It's crit, which doesn't matter. Uh, Scyther was a huge, huge threat to my team. I'm glad that piece of shit is down. Uh, and now he's gonna go into Larson, hit Sunny T. And I'm gonna pause this for a second. As you can see, I'm switching out. Because if he goes for Sludge Wave and I stay in, I lose the game. Right there. Over Dunzo, I lose. Unless I nimbly dodge a couple of hits with Sneasel and Lucario. Or Lucario, one of them, I think, should be enough. Um, so, I'm gonna have to switch, expecting a Sludge Wave. However, I know that his best play is Volt Switch, which doesn't change a thing. Because if I go into Lucario and he goes for Sludge Wave, I just win. Game is over, I win 3 0. I win right there with Lucario, I can set up an SD on the thing potentially, or just click Close Combat uh, to knock out the thing or the incoming Volcanion with CC plus E Speed. So I get a guaranteed kill, and with only one Pokemon, he cannot beat Clefable. Simple enough. Um, if he goes for Volts, which I go into Lucario, everything is still fine, honestly. Caesar can still take a Sludge Wave, potentially. Uh, so I can still make that play if I have to later on. Um, and Lucario is going to go down to a Volcano, which is completely fine if he goes for Volts, which right here. Um, but I can hit some Chibi damage off of Volcano, put it in range for less Moonblast from my Clefable, so I can risk a little less hacks, which would be nice. Uh, and everything will be fine. So, I'm going to continue here. Uh, as you can see, I'm switching and going into Lucario. I again, if he goes for Sludge Wave right here, I win the game 100%. He goes for World Switch. He makes his best possible play. Uh, as I said, I knew it was his play, his best play. Um, he made the right play, he made the right choice. Uh, but we're still in the clear here. Um, kind of. <laughs> so, he's going to go to Volcano. I'm just going to go for the E speed on this turn, get some damage off on the thing. And as you can see, it's actually going to do a pretty solid chunk, considering that I am unboosted with no life orb or anything. Uh, and Volcanion has really good bulk, so... Lucario is going to go down to Fire Blast, which is completely fine by me. Because now I can bring Clefable, and we're going to have some some thought processes here. Um, my play, 100%. Moonblast. Moonblast is die. 
He's missing five last because I get revenge hex, motherfucker. <laughs> going for moon blast. Don't get a drop, which is fine because he's already gonna miss. Going for another five blast. Miss again, and I'm gonna go for another moon blast. Um, and bring him down. I'm gonna talk about this in a second because this game is pretty much over. I'll go over it in a bit. So he's gonna go for third five blast. Finally hit one, which is nice. Um, and that does nothing. Look at that. That's a volcano. And Clefable does not give a shit, dude. It's gonna knock him out with the moon blast. Volcano is gonna go down, and now it's 30 against the world, and I have a sneeze which outspeeds it, which is banned. I can just click Ice Shot and click whatever I want, pretty much, uh, and we'll be fine. Also, one, two, three HP is sweet. <laughs> so Larson's gonna come in. He's gonna go for Third Wave, and can we live this and make this a two and get five kills for the table? A fucking course we can. Our fucking captain is pulling through. Moonlast, get the fuck out of my face, Thunderous. And that's a tour victory for the Bayern Munich in week 3 of the PPL Season 4. Whew! GG Alex, that was such an, such an intense game. In, in, intense? Intense game. Um, I don't think I remember the last time I did so many cocks during a battle. Um, Jesus Christ, okay. Intense. Okay, but hacks. Let's, let's, get talk, let's talk about that. Um, fire Blast misses. If he would have hit a Fire Blast, I would have gone for Moonlight, and he, as you saw, does less than half to me. Uh, I think the max roll is 50%, and then I have lefties as well, so I would have potentially stalled him out of Fire Blasts at some point. Um, or he would have missed one, like missing was inevitable pretty much with me going for Moonlight. Uh, or he could have gotten a crit or a burn, so either way, pretty much the only way he could have won was getting lucky. Well, this game would have ended with some sort of luck anyway. Probably. Um, you could have also gone into Thunderous on a predicted, um, on a predicted Moonlight of Clefable uh, at some point, and that could have also won him the game potentially. But I could have then just gone to Sneasel, uh, lived a certain way from gone for a Bandit knockoff and killed one of his two threats, and then Clefable beats the other one. Uh, so I think I would have been in the clear there, um, as he would have gone for Vault Switch. So there were, would have been a lot of uh, uh, scenarios that could have gone wrong or right, I suppose. <laughs> um, yeah. That there were a lot of thought processes that would, would, would went into this game, a lot of somewhat 50-50s, um, especially near the end, and that was just a crazy game. Uh, I think I think the hacks evened out, because that crit flitter Lagos was so, so huge, if that didn't happen, none of the other, other hacks would have had to happen. None of it. Still waiting on Clefable. That might have mattered, but I didn't need. I wouldn't have needed Clefable as much if Vladis didn't go down. So, um, yeah, that's that's that. Uh, that crit flinch was huge. MVP, of course. I don't think I have to say it. Moonshine to Clefable. Our captain with five fucking kills. How about that shit? No combine, nothing. Just being a fucking god uh, or goddess, I guess. Cause it's female. Um, Clefable's on number 2 in the MVP race, or the Golden Pokemon what excuse me. Right behind Manaphy. So hey, two of my favorite draft format Pokemon are number 1 and 2, which is kind of sweet. Um, then I clearly went to Ladias, and then just, uh, it was the Clefable show. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, that's that. Again, GG Alex, make sure to check him out, he's a lovely dude. Uh, and that was a game. <laughs> so, um... We're now 2 and 1. We are back at a. Not back. We have a positive differential. Finally, Jesus Christ, three weeks uh, three weeks into the season, we are at a positive differential, and that is pretty fucking sweet. So, um, that's pretty much all I have to say for this match. Next week. Oh, oh boy, next week. Talking about important crits in this match. Next week, we'll go up against the saddest loss last season. Or the person we had off. Status lost against last season. You know what I mean. Sam, A.K. Fufu, and his new Castle United. The Battle of the Muse is gonna happen again. This time we're gonna fucking beat him, and we're gonna not get fucking crit, and we're gonna get the win that we should have gotten last season. <laughs> so we should come out next week. It's gonna be a fantastic match, I can assure you, because Sam and I are we're gonna have a good game. It's just how it works. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be it. I forgot to give this user shoutouts. Fuck. Kino for the graphics, Juan for joining my team and for recording the match. Check them out, they're amazing. I'm gonna get out of here, thank you all for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment, leave some nudes. I will appreciate your tweets and hopefully see you guys next time. Goodbye.